Back in 2008, the Scottish government gave the go-ahead for a huge natural experiment. A trial to bring back one of the animals that lived in the Caledonian forest long ago, the beaver. It was an idea that took 20 years in the making, almost 50 square kilometers of land and the cooperation of 16 Norwegian beavers. I came here in 2009, just a few months after the beavers were first released, and The One Show has been following the story ever since. On my first visit, I went kayaking with Philippa Revel, who was monitoring the beavers. They're crepuscular animals, meaning they're most active at dawn and dusk. But we were lucky enough to see one in broad daylight. A pretty beaver. <laughs> they're massive in the water as well. In 2010, we reported on the first babies that were born to the Scottish trial beavers. A few years later, Miranda went on a nighttime paddle and discovered that at least one of the original Scottish trial beavers, a male called Frank, was still going strong. Can you see him? I've been there, moving in the water. Oh, wow! And towards the end of 2015, I discovered that the beavers are still thriving when I met up with Ollie Hemmings of the Scottish Wildlife Trust. We started with four family groups at the, in 2009. Obviously, we've had so many deaths, so many births and so many dispersals throughout the trial period, and we've got about the same number of beavers that we started with. And have you seen the beavers recently? Yes, I have. We see them quite often, and there's a lodge just over there where I've had very recent camera trap footage of a beaver family and some kits. Ollie's shots of the beaver kits indicate that the population here is a healthy one and her camera traps have captured some footage of the adults hard at work. They fell trees with their extraordinarily strong teeth, both for food and to flood surrounding areas, enabling them to access more food while remaining hidden from predators. But these changes can also have a significant impact on the plants and animals that share these wet woodlands, and it's those effects that have been monitored so closely during this trial Karen Taylor is from Scottish Natural Heritage. What the beavers have done when they've come in is that they've felled some areas and that's opened up the canopy and let light into the, the canopy floor, allowed regeneration of, of ground flora and seeds that, in, that are dormant in the soil. And there's these patches, these different niches that are really important for all the other things that, that rely on the woodlands. So it's this, this habitat patchiness that beavers have created that's really key. Flooding might be good for biodiversity, but there are many who see it as a serious potential downside of a wider release. In March 2015, the One Show spoke to a farmer with concerns about flood damage to his land. Adrian Ivory farms in Tayside, which is outside of the beaver trial area, but home to a small number of beavers that are thought to have escaped from private collections. We have cleared out seven to eight dams here, and if we left it, these fields would become unproductive. We couldn't use them because they'd just be bogs. That's thousands of pounds worth of damage. The Scottish Beaver Trial has been a really comprehensive study that's looked in real detail at all of the impacts of the reintroduction of this animal. There are many people with an interest in the outcome of this trial, from those who value the beaver's contribution to biodiversity and see them as a natural part of the landscape to others with very real concerns about the impact on their livelihoods. That's why the decision from the Scottish Government about the future of beavers in Scotland has been so eagerly awaited.